All right, guys, welcome to the module on objects and classes. In this module, we're going to learn all about what classes are, what objects are, how to use them, how to create objects and so on. But before we go down that road, what I'm going to do is guide you through how object oriented thinking happens in the real world. So suppose you work at a software engineering firm and you're an object oriented uh, software designer, you're a Java programmer. Your boss comes up to you and he says, I want you to code up an online shopping website with a shopping cart, a product catalog and automated billing. Basically, he's just told you to replicate Amazon.com and you're a little scared. But then you think, my job is to convert what is complex into something simple and structured in a computer language. So you're going to think object oriented. All right. So the first step in your software engineering exercise is to get a problem statement. Now your boss has been kind enough to give you a problem statement. Great. What's our next step? Our next step is to think object oriented. So what does it mean to think object oriented? You ask two fundamental questions. What are the objects and how do they interact? And both these questions have to be related to your problem statement. So what are the objects in my problem statement and how do they interact with each other? All right. Then you design your object oriented solution and you think at a high level of abstraction. So what does that mean? You take a pen and a paper or the back of a napkin and you just draw your objects or maybe you use some fancy drawing tool and you just, you know, at a really high level without thinking of details, think simply in terms of objects. The next stage is where you actually start coding and that is where you use an object oriented language such as Java and all its properties such as encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism to translate your drawings or your design into code. Then of course you have to test your code and if your code is working fine, you're ready to ship it. So this is how object oriented programming happens in the real world, in the industry. All right, now let's get into Java and let's understand how Java deals with object oriented programming. So of course, since we're talking about object oriented programming, Let's first talk about objects themselves. What is an object? An object is a thing, anything. The sun, the moon, a cricket bat, a ball, a file in your computer, a Facebook profile, anything can be an object as long as it is an object in your solution to the problem statement. Now, when you describe objects in English, how do you describe them? You typically describe objects in two ways. You say what the object has or the properties of the object and you say what the object does or the behavior of the object. Let me take an example and clarify this. My object is going to be this football. So what does this object have? This object has color, diameter and brand. Now these three properties are going to describe this football. The color is obvious. Diameter is a measure of the size and the brand Nike, Adidas, whoever made the ball. All right. What does this football do? This football can bounce. This football can roll. So I've described the behavior of the football. So with the properties and the behavior, I have completely described this ball object. Now, if in my object oriented solution at a high level, I was designing a ball, then this is how I would do it. I would just write it in plain English. That's it. Now we are going to learn in this module how to describe such objects in Java. All right, let's move on. Now, the next obvious question is how do you make objects? Now in Java, the way to make objects is you need to define a class. You need to define a class for every type of object that you have in your solution. So what is a class? A class is simply a blueprint for an object. A blueprint means an engineering drawing. So somebody can sit in an office and draw an engineering drawing of a building and then a civil engineer goes and actually constructs that building. So in the same way in Java, you can de describe an object in a class and then the Java virtual machine can actually make actual uh, objects for you. So a class acts as a blueprint for an object and that's how you make objects uh, using classes. Now I'll give you one more analogy to make this really clear in your head. The best way to think about classes is like a rubber stamp. So what is a rubber stamp? You have all seen a rubber stamp. It's just a piece of rubber with something embossed in it, say your name and your address. Now when you actually go and stamp this rubber stamp, it's going to appear on a paper or wherever you've stamped it with that name and that address. 
so this rubber stamp which is in your hand is a class it's a description name address and when you actually stamp it you've given it a physical instance this physical instance is your object and this is exactly how it works in java first you write the blueprint or the rubber stamp in a class and then you make as many instances of it as you require for your solution so now you know theoretically what is a class what is an object next we are going to actually get into some java code learn some syntax and learn how to make objects and so on now let's go back to our ball example we uh, described the ball in simple english in terms of its properties and its behavior so how do we translate this into java we translate this into java by using the class keyword now you all have all written classes before but the classes that you wrote the hello world class or the basic programs or the star patterns you wrote simple classes with only the uh, pub public static void main method those classes are not really how classes are meant to be used in java in java a class describes an object so let's see how the ball class is written first of all you use the class keyword you already know this then you you put the name of the class so in our case i'm going to call it ball then what you have to do is you take the properties that you want and you write them one after the another one after the other as variable declarations so uh, you could say string color float diameter string brand because that is obviously what it would translate to a color blue yellow red is a string a diameter 1.5 uh, meters or whatever some unit is probably a float and a brand nike adidas is also a string so you translated your english properties into java properties next you take your behavior and you translate it into a method so methods expose behavior of an object this is a really important concept now methods as you know require a return type both bounce and roll are making the ball do something they are not actually returning anything so the return type is void and both bounce and roll need to know something right bounce needs to know how high to bounce flow a roll needs to know how far to roll so we are going to give them a parameter float height float uh, distance so this is how you translate behavior in java into methods now in the language of java technically properties are called the data members of a class and behavior is called the member methods of a class so with that we have just translated a simple english description of a ball object into a java description of the same object and we have taken a big step forward in our object oriented thinking